Welcome from me, Guy Monson, to our regular six-minute strategy. The last mile of their investment journey is proving difficult for central bankers, as US inflation exceeded forecasts for a third straight month. The US core CPI rose 0.4% in March, with the main culprits being higher housing and shelter costs, higher car insurance and maintenance, and gasoline, all factors which our UK viewers would probably confer, concur with. In response, US bond yields pushed higher, with the US 10-year breaching the 4.5% level, while the futures markets moved to pricing just two US rate cuts for the remainder of this year. At the beginning of the year, the market forecast was 4 to 6. The modestly higher inflation data reflects other strong economic numbers that we've seen across the economy. US non-farm payrolls in March were almost 100,000 higher than estimates. Fourth quarter GDP was strong while the renowned ISM business survey was better than expectations on most every measure. This prompted Larry Summers, the famous academic and ex-US Treasury Secretary, to say that last week's jobs report suggested that, if anything, the economy was actually re-accelerating. From the investment perspective, then, yes, stronger data and stickier prices are delaying rate cuts, pushing up bond yields and lifting the dollar. But on the other hand, a stronger economy is good for underlying earnings, both in the US and globally. We'll look at what this late cycle growth surge means for markets and for your portfolio in the slides ahead. So let's look at that US consumer price inflation data in a little bit more detail on the left-hand panel. The headline rate, which fell so impressively last year, beginning to tick up again to 3.5%, that core rate stalling rather stubbornly at 3.8%. Now, compared to the Federal Reserve's target of 2%, you can see that number is still quite a way away. So this last mile proving stickier and harder than we expected. What's behind that? Well, probably an economy that's simply stronger than we'd anticipated. I plotted there the change over the quarter in US payroll numbers, non-farm payrolls. Excuse those extremes in the middle of the chart for COVID. But you can see that uptick we've seen in the last few months as the data's come in better than expected. Government is behind a lot of this, these giant fiscal programs from the Biden administration. That's helping manufacturing. The famous ISM survey number above 50 suggests expansion, ticking up there for prices paid, for new orders, and even for employment. On the right-hand panel, you can see the impact of government, particularly on real expenditure growth and gross investment. That figure of about 11.8% for investment is very strong. Again, it's that Biden fiscal spend coming into play in the real economy. Looked at globally, the PMI, the Purchasing Manager's numbers, are also impressive. Again, that number above 50 in the right-hand panel there, rising globally for manufacturing and services now. Particularly impressive performance out of India, from Spain and Italy and Southern Europe, and from Brazil and the emerging markets. But those PMI numbers starting to improve on a global basis. So let's see what this implies for interest rates for the year ahead. On the left-hand panel, I've shown what the market thinks. The red line for the US there showing the current rate five and a quarter to five and a half percent. At the beginning of the year, market had rocked in six rate cuts starting from June. Today, it's just got two rate cuts down to five percent, starting probably later in the summer. A similar picture for the UK in blue, the interest rates here in the UK five and a quarter percent. At the beginning of the year, the market was rocking in five or six cuts, taking it down to around about 3.9 to 4 percent. Uh, currently, the Bank of England thinks just two rate cuts. So a big change in market expectations. In our own forecast, we broadly agree with the US number. We think that the Europe and the UK, probably the cuts will be a little bit greater than the market expects, down to three and four and a quarter percent. But clearly, quite a material change in views. This tighter money, of course, is having an impact on markets. We've seen bond markets sell off and the dollar go stronger. On the left-hand panel, you can see the dollar up 4% year-to-date, oil up 20% year-to-date on the back of improved demand and OPEC supply cuts, and gold on the anticipation of higher inflation up about 12%. On the right-hand chart, I've shown the bond yields, and you can see on that dotted line the end of the year, you can see those yields picking up in the US quite markedly, the UK, and even in the Eurozone here in Germany. What does this mean for equity markets? Well, of course, there's some challenge for more highly valued stocks from higher interest rates, but it's good for underlying earnings. And we've seen those one-year forward earnings numbers tick up quite markedly. Asia looking at 17% growth, according to Factset, North America 16, and the Europe somewhere around 9%. Impressive numbers, 
Dividends are up over 7%, very nice, against an underlying inflation number, even if it's a little higher. That's an opportunity for dividend styles that have underperformed somewhat this year, and share buybacks relatively robust. So we've pivoted our asset allocation, we've taken down our bond exposure, increased our equity exposure, and kept our strategic holding in gold to play those inflation fears if they resurface in any meaningful way later in the year. So let's summarise. For you as investors, I hope that gives you an idea what's lying behind the slightly sticky inflation numbers, why the US economy might actually be re-accelerating, and what this means for asset allocation across your portfolios. Thank you very much.